Welcome one, welcome all. There we go. To the greatest show of all time. It is the NFC East Mixtape, the greatest crossover event ever attempted and successfully landed in the history of the world. You can listen to this podcast in any of the places that you find NFC East content across SB Nation. That's Blogging the Boys for Dallas Cowboys content, Bleeding Green Nation for Philadelphia Eagles, Big Blue View for New York Giants, and Hogs Haven for Washington Commanders. You can also watch this show on the Blogging the Boys YouTube channel or the Bleeding Green Nation YouTube channel. I am RJ Ochoa from BTB. He is Brandon Lee Gotten from BGN. BLG, happy Tuesday to you for us happy wednesday to you for the listeners happy mid-july for everyone really welcome to uh the middle of the month i want to offer a big congratulations to tony romo who just won some <laughs> golf thing and i just have to say you know it's, it's really funny how good at golf he is i guess it's just from all that time he had when the cowboy seasons ended early uh nice. so yeah there super you go funny. super clever um wow Uh, It was his third victory of the American Century Championship, which is kind of a celebrity event, uh, which is why he's in it or was in it and has been in it. Steph Curry's there. I mean, I'm sure you see all the material and content that comes out from like, you know, Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes was there and stuff. I believe it was at this event. um, Was it two years ago or a year ago when remember that line Mahomes had about Herbert and how uh, he was he like, what was it like he mispronounced his name or Mm -hmm. he got his name wrong and everybody was like, well, he had some like kind of somewhat hot takey quote um that was a big deal but anyway um he won it in a playoff romo did this uh this particular time so tony romo coming up clutch in the playoffs uh was the the low-hanging fruit joke of the week so i made it and um had a good time with that so uh thank you uh for congratulating romo we really appreciate that as dallas cowboys fans what has uh what has donovan McNabb won lately huh Mm, i don't know he was in the aj brown tweet uh when uh, AJ Brown first called him Steve McNabb and then deleted that and then corrected it to Donovan, uh, which is kind of the whole Jalen Hurts uh, controversy story going on in Eagles world. I don't know how closely you've been following along with that. So that's that's what uh, Donovan McNabb, I guess, has done recently. Is nothing you know, has been brought up. You bring that up. We do have kind of a mishmash um, kind of crop of stories to get to. Um, but we are going to put together our all NFC East defensive team the way we did offense last week. I thought um, it was defense all stars. Oh, defense all stars. Wow, whatever. you, you uh, broke it. <laughs> You know what, Brandon? I record a lot of podcasts and write a lot of articles and do a lot of videos. So I yeah, forgot so I. What, this, what this series was called. Um, but anyway, uh, so what we, we'll get to the all and the NFC East All-Stars on defense. There we go. Um, which is appropriate. You know, the MLB, you could argue, stole our thunder. We were doing All-Stars first, and the next Tuesday they're mm. going to have this like All-Star game. Uh, but, um, but anyway, uh, so um, we'll get there. But first of all, uh, a reminder to subscribe to whatever podcast provider you prefer for your team site here at SB Nation. Leave a rating, write a review. If you do, we'll always read them. You can always interact with us as well on Twitter or Instagram. He is at Brandon Gowton on both. I am at RJ Cho on both. We make it nice and easy for you. Uh, I do want to read a tweet uh, from a user that sent it to us, BLG. Uh, this actually came to us on Monday. I am definitely going to mess this last name up, the, pronun- the pronunciation of it. It is Michael Kajorski. Maybe I got Ooh. that correct. I really don't know. Uh, but the Twitter handle is at M, K- what is presumably Kajorski, K E D Z I O R S K I 16, says NFC East Mixtape is the best crossover show ever. BLG is the best. RG Ochoa is a person. The Eagles <laughs> are God's gift to mankind. The Cowboys are worse than a dirty diaper. Uh, so, um,. That was a thing that somebody said um, to us on the internet. I think you're leaving out the rest. No, that was it. And then the rest was at RJ Ochoa, at Brandon Gunn, oh. hashtag NFC's mixtape. I'm thinking of the one I sent you, which was the guy who asked you to rap. Okay, so if you want, <laughs> I can do this. Um, uh, I forgot about this, too. It's been a busy morning, um, but I promise I'll make up for it in the next 90 seconds or so. So we do have a review that comes to us from um, the Bleeding Green Nation side of things. It is titled, or excuse me, it comes to us from asterisk big dash pig. Uh, It is a five star rating and it is titled creative review title. So, you know, talk about low hanging fruit. Okay. Love the pod. NFC's mixtape, BGN radio and all the rest. I listen on Spotify, but I had to swing over here to drop a review because Spotify only has an option to give a rating. You know, be like Big Pig, everybody. And if you don't have uh, an iPhone, then when you go to the store, you know what I mean? Go to the iPhones there and Target or Best Buy, whatever. BLG was talking about his Apple Watch and issues he's got going on. Go to the store, go to their devices, do it there. Here we go. 
I'm writing a rap review and I challenge RJ, the word challenge is in all caps, to attempt performing this on the <laughs> NFC East mixtape. Um, I didn't practice this, clearly, because I forgot <laughs> about it. Uh, but I will do it if you want me to, Brandon. Yeah. And I don't know if you you see it in the review here, but he has a uh, like a little guide for you. He said the numbers are the beats. So I see that. So like, can you give me your take on what that means, and then I'll do it. But like, because I I did see that. I just don't know. So it says numbers are the beats one two three four. So like, what is that? What does that mean to you? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't help at all. I think the cadence. I guess like the yeah, spacing I mean, like, of those one two three four. Okay. Then now here we go. Five stars, because six is not an option. Best pod. I listen very often. It's hard. Waiting for. It's dropping each week. There is no better content. Cowgirls, birds, New York, and Washington. Eagles got this divis locked in. Talk food, pizza, lower high end. Big mood, keep the podcast rocking. Wow. Really need someone to like clip that. Maybe Rachel clip that and like, you know, add like a uh, royalty free <laughs> like beat on the end of it or on the back end of it. That's, that was pretty that's good. Gonna, that's probably going to chart, honestly. If we if we put that out there, that's getting on the top 100. I mean, look, that was pretty good. I I don't do this often. I demand props. Like I I earned them. That was pretty good. Good job. You it wasn't on. you singing. Um, I left my heart in San Francisco. Or whatever. That it was is last so year. hard. I, I think about <laughs> that still, and it's just like that is like the worst possible song like to sing karaoke kind of style because there's just no rhythm. There's no like. It's very hard. It's like. It just shifts. I can't talk music. I don't know what I'm saying here, uh, right. but it's just it's it's not like you know, uh, you know what's a what's a basic song uh, like Happy Birthday to you, you Hot know, and or, Cold by Katy Perry. Yeah, Hot and Cold, or I don't know, like um, you know, Mary had a little lamb. Like you know, there's like a rhythm, there's a, a, a timing. You get it down, uh, but not so with that song. Um, okay. Uh, well, congratulations to me. Thank you, Big Pig. Um, again, wherever you guys listen, leave a rating, write a review. If you leave a rap, we will, like, again, don't let anybody ever say, Brandon, that we won't do what the reviews say. Um, so uh, if you ask BLG to do a handstand on next week's episode in the review, if you write it, he'll do it. And, and I the can't YouTube do audience it. I can see. try to do it, but I can't do it. He'll do it, though. He will at least try to do it on the show. So, I mean, just know that. Whatever physical activity you ask, it doesn't have to just be audio. Anyway, um, so two things before we get to the NFC East All-Stars on defense. Um, I know I told you about one of them, but I'm throwing this one um, as a curveball to you. Because I want to make sure we touch on every team. Because we get them like, you guys only talk about the Cowboys and the Eagles, blah, blah, blah. Um, so... Kevin Cole does a great job um, for PFF um, and has a podcast called Unexpected Points. I don't know, you know who listens to it, but it is, um, it is very good and very, um, very interesting and very informative. And um, he recently talked about Hall of Fame candidacy and things like that. Um, and he tweeted out a clip, BLG. I don't know if you saw this uh, as the mail truck passes by. Bears pissed off. I'm just going to read it to you word for word. The Twitter handle for the show is unexpected underscore points PTS. Does Tony Romo belong in the Hall of Fame? His stat-based case is borderline, and he doesn't have longevity, playoff success, or much in the way of accolades. Yes, Romo deserves it over someone like Eli Manning, but the case is tougher and a wider lens on all the greats who didn't make it. So I quote tweeted that, BLG, and ever since my mentions have been filled with this, my take on that was, no, Tony Romo is not a Hall of Famer. He no. does deserve it over, say, Eli Manning. That's not to say he deserves it, but but, but again, he deserves like, it over a guy with like basically right, a all, career five hundred record. All, all I'm saying is, if 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 you had to put one of them in the Hall of Fame, it's Romo. That's what I mean by that. And three is that Eli will unfortunately get in. Do you agree with all those? One, he's not a Hall of Famer. Two, he does deserve it over Eli. Although again, he doesn't deserve it. And three, that unfortunately Eli will get in. And then when I said that, some people were like. Oh, well, if Eli's going to get in, then then that means Romo should get in. No, I mean, that's no. just like Eli will get in for like stupid political reasons. But so do you agree with all three of my main points? I do. Perfect. I think anyone would really. I don't think anyone is really. I mean, well, apparently, you know, not in your mentions and everything. But I think like coming from an Eagles perspective, I think most people would agree with those statements. Yeah. And then like I got all these Giants fans like, oh, d- dude, be objective. Come on, Eli deserves in the, the, the he beat Brady Two rings. twice in the Super Bowl. Yeah, he's super MVP in the, the Super Bowl. No, he was he was awful. Like he had two great moments. Yes, cool. But other, it's not like just that. Outside of those moments, he wasn't 
great or he, he was like good he, he outside of those moments he was mostly average to very bad i mean right. so like it, it, it's that that's the thing it's not like oh he was this kind of you know kind of good quarterback like even if like kirk cousins had those two performances i think you could make a huge argument for him being in the hall of fame but like he's been league average to you know pretty good for most of his career whereas eli's ceiling was league average like i know that you know he had like you know, just moments of call it greatness, but he was for the most part, one of the worst quarterbacks in the NFL. I have said this before about Eli and talking about how he's overrated, but to me, it comes down to, for some reason, people don't count the bad. Like they only count the two Super Bowls, but like all those years of losing at the end of his career, they just don't matter for some reason. Like, what are you talking about? Those absolutely factor in. And that ultimately results in him being again, basically like a career 500 quarterback. Like that's not Hall of Fame worthy. Like that counts too. The bad stuff counts too. It's an argument that I have with Nick Foles when Nick Foles was here. And like the Super Bowl is great. And he's a hero forever for that. But for people who are trying to argue like he should be a starting quarterback, if not in Philly, elsewhere, like clearly the evidence is borne out that he's not good enough for that. Like because he has high highs, but he also has really low lows. And the low lows count too. You can't just like dismiss them because they're inconvenient to what you want to believe. So that's my argument on that. And speaking of that point, that's something I will talk about if we talk about the Hertz thing in terms of people just believe what they want to believe. Oh, dude. Well, okay. Let's talk about that then. Again, we're just kind of like rolling through the latest. Can by the way for the YouTube audience, Brandon, can you center yourself a little bit more? Your face no, is like all the I way. I want to lean right <laughs> over here. Yes, I will. You want to be closer to me? Um, Sorry. But um, so yeah, I, have the um, open. I, I was looking at other windows. I saw the um, the AJ Brown tweet, which I actually thought was funny um about how it was funny actually it, it was it felt like he was taking a shot at you uh if i'm being honest because mm. you you were somebody who was tweeting during otas like how things were going and aj was like that's stupid you know that tall guy out here just has no idea what he's talking about basically what he said nice. um <laughs> and um and i but the tweet I, that i'm talking about that i loved what, what did he say he said uh, like of the 10 plays we ran or whatever it was. Jalen uh, threw me three touchdowns. Donovan and T.O. got into an argument. Vince Papali, whatever. Like, that was uh -huh. really funny. And I, what I liked about that is, like, play to the audience. Play to your audience, AJ. Know your fans. Like, that was really cool and really funny. So, kudos to AJ Brown. The tweet itself was funny. The constant, like kind of weighing in on things because he also weighed in on the Miles Sanders all-star team thing and like had to uh, explain that and I'm just, I will like, give him though because he was kind of involved was he not like that like, he was kind of like the the impetus for Miles maybe. saying that so I'm but. not saying like again in a vacuum each instance is wrong but if he's gonna continue to do this like throughout his time in Philadelphia That's like fair. you're gonna burn yourself out man like you can't do that like you can't worry about what everyone is saying all the time and coming from Tennessee uh, where that probably, you know, it's just not the same kind of market at all. Like, that's something I think he's going to have to get used to. But um, it's just funny to me because people will see that tweet and be like, well, the report was fake because AJ Brown said it's fake. It's uh, like, okay. <laughs> so, the, his teammate, first of all, and not even, and beyond that, a guy who literally, like, his, his money making ability is impacted by his relationship with the quarterback. Like, well, and, if, and his buddy, like, they're friends and his too. Buddy. So, yeah. like, how is that surprise? Like, people are like, well, why would he say it? Like, are you saying AJ Brown is lying? I mean, I don't think he has it 100% right in his tweet, which is like he said that it's fake and in part because sacks don't exist in seven on seven because there are no pass rushers. I mean, like, that's just like dumb. Like, that's like in, like, that's intellectually dishonest because, yes, you can't actually like take down the quarterback because there isn't a defensive end there. But if the quarterback's holding onto the ball for literally like 12 seconds, the coaches are going to whistle the play dead. And that's basically, it's like a functionally a sack. So like, if we really want to like parse through that, like it's, yes, it is possible that he took sacks. And I think the whole, like where this kind of got out of control is people only saw Derek Gunn, uh, who, if you don't know, RJ and other people might not know, is like very plugged in the Eagles stuff. Um, and it's funny because he used to work for NBC Sports Philadelphia and do like the post game interviews with the players. So he's tight with the players. Um, but they like got rid of him. And that was like such a bad decision by them. And also he's just been like unemployed for a while. But even when he's been unemployed, he's still like been getting scoops, which is just, like really funny because it's like, what are you even credit? You're just crediting this person, not even an outlet. But anyway, yeah. Uh, Derek Gunn cited he had a really bad series, like, you know, a 10 play series or whatever in the spring. And I think everyone saw that part and ran with that and was like, oh, well, it's just one bad series. Everyone's making too much out of it. But later in that kind of um, monologue, I guess he had about Hertz, 
he was saying like to a more general point the eagles organization like isn't feeling super like confident or great about him and i don't think that was just based on that series like Derek gunn has been around for a long time i don't think he was saying you have this bad series and now they they're concerned about him because of that like no i think he said they're they have this bigger overall concern and some of the inconsistencies in practice spoke to that and yes he did look good in the two OTA practices that I attended, the first one I thought he was pretty good throughout. The second one he kind of started slow and then finished strong. Um, but that was also two of six days. So that wasn't necessarily every day. One of those days, apparently, when we weren't there, he didn't look good at all. So, and then that shapes things because what if that was the day, you know, that media was there? Then it would be, you know, so it's, it's a little out of control. It's a little silly. But like this idea that uh, it's all fake and it's coming from nowhere is just, it's just a case of people not wanting to believe it's true. Because if Derek Gunn said the same, like if he said, Dude, if it was a positive practice, review, yeah, everyone be like, yeah, yeah, let's go. Like no one would well, question be, the source. It'd be what AJ's saying, right? It'd be like, look at this, like boom, you're right. like stupid, boom. But I, I guarantee you, this, if this hasn't happened yet, um, like one of your tweets, like cause I forgot exactly what, what your tweet was, but um, about like Jalen overthrowing or missing, I guarantee between like in the last since the AJ tweet happened, somebody has responded to that with the AJ tweet, like boom, or like a screenshot of the tweet, like that's just. People, Maybe. Pe- people look to confirm their priors. That's the way things go sometimes. All the times now, which is just kind of frustrating and sad when you're talking about sports. It's, it's again, it's just literally believing what you want to believe. Uh, um, I mean, stats does it even with Trey Lance. So, uh, um, so listen to the explanation NFL show, everybody, um, to hear stats is, um, we'll call it ridiculous belief. Um, anyway, um, okay, last thing, um, now that we've talked about the worst quarterback in the division, um, is uh, you actually sent me this. I missed this. I was really busy Monday, um, clearly working harder than you. Um, an article from SBNation.com, so uh, my bad, I'm missing it. Um, the title of the article, Brandon, the Washington Commanders even screwed up honoring their greatest players. I like not to criticize our own, but like they've already screwed up honoring their greatest players. So, like they screwed the the Sean Taylor thing up. But um, that makes it so, so much worse because like they messed no, that up. No, I know. And you would think like okay, maybe let's make sure we don't have that happen again, and then it just happened again. <laughs> so um, again, I I was kind of a late arrival to this. So they were they've been putting out or like slowly releasing the Commanders ninety. Is that correct? Like, is that your assessment of the situation? I guess I don't. Know. What is that again exactly? Though it's it's the, like well, okay, okay. So, so the commanders the 90 greatest is, players is the, to commemorate the 90th year of the team. Um, I mean, this is a pretty easy, low hanging fruit exercise for team sites or anyone to do, right? Like kind of you know like a you know there's 67 days left. Who's the greatest 67 in team history type of idea? Um, and so it it has gone maybe about as bad as you could possibly imagine um yeah. out of like the group that was involved trent williams was not there speaking of stats the um, best tackle and, in the nfl <laughs> right and the um the general i guess reasoning or the perceived reasoning is because of the drama between him and the team uh when Lee- i actually think that that's giving them too much credit Honestly, like I, I think that that's giving whoever compiled this list based on the evidence we're about to run through too much credit. I think they just forgot that he played for the team. Like that's honestly what I think. I don't it's know. Possible. If you agree. That's yeah. possible. Either way, really bad. And then you know some players' names were spelled wrong. So, so yeah, th- this is the full list, and this was at the time of this article's publishing, which is on Monday here at SB Nation. Um, so these are the all, all the transgressions with all the issues with the list. Trent Williams omitted. Joe Lavender was spelled incorrectly. Laverne Torgerson was spelled incorrectly. Um, a photo purporting to be of Sammy Baugh's final game in 1952 had him wearing a leather helmet, which was phased out of the NFL in 1949, so clearly not 1952. Sammy Baugh was listed as playing for the team from 1957 to 1964. <laughs> he retired in 1952. Uh, so which 14 they, years. <laughs> but they also, um, and this is noted in the article, they themselves had noted that he had retired in 1952 when they showed the, the photo of him. Um, a slide of Doug Williams showed his tenure as 1986 to 1986. Um, <laughs> Hugh Taylor was listed as playing from 1974 to 1985. Um, this, and then the line from James here is, if this was accurate, he would have been 51 years old as a rookie and retired at 62. Wow. He actually played from 1947 to 1954. The copy for the Commander's 90 said that the team began with 70 players in 2002 
and then added another 80 individuals in 2012, which would make a total of 160, not 90. Um, you, this actually goes back to your Eli Jalen take. The last one, the team ignored that Joe Gibbs coached the team from 2004 yeah. through 2007 and just noted he coached it from 81 to 92 because that did not go well. Um, so, yeah. Um, and apparently, and I saw this on the commander subreddit, uh, apparently they have for the most part fixed these things, but it's just like, how do you do this? Like, <laughs> how, how could this possibly have, this is an unbelievable level of failure and incompetence. Yeah. It's consistent with what goes on down there and it's consistent with what we saw with Sean Taylor, as we talked about. And it's just, again, okay, you do something really bad and you make, a mistake and it's very embarrassing and it's not really forgivable with sean taylor but at least mm -hmm. at the very least maybe learn from it like you that's the very yeah, least exactly. you do it's like take it i'll be like okay we messed this up really bad let's make sure that doesn't happen again <laughs> and then it did so it's just it's so pathetic um i like i said we can have this conversation a different day although i mean we're obviously getting closer to camp but like i i don't totally believe in like changing fandoms like it's, I, I don't have like a strong take on that but like if you are a commanders fan and you want to leave yeah. I think you can. Like, what are you? I, what are you, what are you there for? Like, what is what is there for you to really like root for and hang your hat on, as we always talk about, and latch on to? Like, and who could blame you? Who could blame you at all? I I think the only thing that that would be there for you is like not history, like the team history that the team itself doesn't care about, but like your personal history, right? Like rooting for the team as a kid or with your family or parent or, you know, sibling or friend or whatever. I mean, like, it's hard to, it's hard to like, it feels like you're like ruining those memories, even though you're not. But it, I mean, I get that. I get that emotional tie. That's just kind of what being a fan is all about. Um, I might have this wrong too, because I can't speak to living in the DMV area, but it just feels to me like that's not necessarily the most culturally tied in like you know, the eagles are very culturally tied to philly um and again another place of a weaker example would be like la it's like there's a you know there's a bunch of transplants who live in la so it's not like mm -hmm. you have to root for the rams there you, i'm sure there's fandoms of a lot of different teams i feel like washington maybe because of just you know like the the idea that's the capital I feel like a lot of people probably move there too or a decent amount it's like you don't you don't owe this to like the culture as well in addition to the team being bad so yeah just just pick another team yeah, and, I get and that. No, literally no one will blame you. I get what you're saying. Like, it'd be hard to kind of like walk the streets of Philadelphia and not be an Eagles fan, or like right. you know, like be a former Eagles fan. I guess. Um, okay, interesting. Uh, last thing before we get to the uh, the All Stars, did you see the new uniform news that dropped? Like, when we started recording, did you see this on, no. on your other window that you were focused on? The Houston Texans dropped a new helmet for the mm. 2022 season. It's red. Um, did they need a new helmet? I think okay, it's gross. It's um, I think yeah, it, it's it looks red. Bad. That's what I said, and all these people are like, "This is fire! This is awesome!" Like, no, it's it's too like cherry red. Like, well, I'm maybe just... the graphic isn't helping. So I'm looking at the graphic here, and the graphic is red too. It just it looks very. There's no contrast. You, it's very if intense. If you flipped, if you flipped the version of the logo, like if so, like if the leading part of the horn was navy, it would look better. But like because the first part, like the reds don't even match. Like the red that's a part of the, the team logo and the red that's on the uh, helmet. You know, um, I just so, saw the Schefter tweet. Okay, yeah, warning it, against the Eagles. I didn't see that. Interesting. Oh, I I didn't know that either. The D'Amico Ryan's Bowl. Um, and it's gonna look bad. Like it, like if you're gonna wear it, wear it. This is my contention. Be be America's team, not actually because it's the Cowboys. Like not trying to relitigate, but like go white jerseys, navy pants, red top, red helmet. You know what I mean? Don't do the all red thing. We don't need that. I we don't need the all red. It will look stupid. Listen to me now. I don't like it the way the I, I think you just said this the red clashing with the red like the red in the logo yeah. clashing with the red of the helmet is that's is what I'm saying if the if the if that if the red part of the logo was was the navy it would look better um because it would be the forward part of the helmet but it, it looks even weird. so yeah I still don't like that though honestly the best I could say is make it a half and half and make the one half of the helmet white or blue or black or something and the other half red and put the logo just on one side and not the red side. I don't know. But then that would this be done is, with the blue and blue. I don't know. Maybe just this don't is a, it. Look, this is a, a an admitted like not left turn, but like, and we're about to get to the All-Stars, but since we're here, I have to bring this up. We've talked about like uniform and logo things before, like the Eagles being the only one that faces left. Do you know that the Texans logo? We've on talked about this. It's not the same logo on both yeah. sides of the helmet that bothers me so much like it's like it's not even the same like if you imagined it to be a real bull it's not the same one it's stupid 
They should have made. I don't, the face I don't know how to vocalize red. my my point. Like, can you explain my point to the listener? Because I'm, I'm having a hard time like actually vocalizing. What do you mean? You, you explained it. Like the, the oh, logo is okay. flipped on either side, so it's not like the same logo. Yeah, but like the bill, like the the charging bill is presumably the same like animal. You know what I'm saying? Like on either uh -huh. side of the helmet, it, it looks like a mirror image of the other. But like the flipped version of the Texans logo from one side to the other is a different face. Like it's a different face entirely because of the like where the the eye is positioned. They're uh -huh. they're actually two different animals. Hmm. Tough. Yeah. Tough look. Okay. What about the face mask? What if they made the face mask red with their no. old helmet? I think okay. this fa this face mask has. You mean on the old helmet or the the new red? Yeah, one? the old helmet. The, so like the, the navy dark helmet? blue helmet. With the, yeah, with a red face mask. No, that might be good. I like I like the navy face mask there. Uh, mm. But I think this face mask needs to be white instead instead of navy on the on the red helmet. So. Ooh, I'm seeing a white one here. That's I don't I don't know if that's is that real? I guess not. the white helmet know. was the one they unveiled when they like announced the team. Like when they announced the team name back in two thousand whatever. That one, one is a red face mask and it's actually pretty sharp. Yeah. This is stupid. All right, anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh let's go ahead and take a break and then we'll do our NFC East All Stars. Welcome back. Uh Brandon, um you definitely left in the break. What did you do? Tell us in explicit I detail. Had some Trader Joe's truffle, white truffle, potato chips, really good. Not a sponsor, but really good. And you should get yourself some if you like potato chips. Mm. And if you like truffle. If you're just not a truffle person, then whatever. It's not going to work for you. But if you like right. it, get them. Um, okay. The time has come um, for our, our NFC East mixtape, NFC East All-Stars here in 2022. Um, so dun, 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 dun. Nice. Um, we are... Um, We've got two defensive ends, two defensive tackles. That's our defensive line. We have two linebackers because we're playing nickel because it's 2022, as mentioned. Three corners, two safeties. Are you ready to start? We're starting up front, moving backwards. Is that how you want to do this? We'll also say, too, like I said about the offense. Like if, if you know, let's say, imagine we had uh, Jason, or Travis Kelsey and um, George Kittle and like all the receivers in the division sucked, then we would do two tight ends. Right, right, right. So, so for this, you know, like the cornerbacks are better than the linebackers. So we're going to have more, more defensive backs. I will also couch it with this, um, like for the corners. Where I'm not, I didn't pick like a slot corner. I just picked the three best corners, like as, as far as I I view them. Like it's okay, a, I understand that's. I think that's, that's tough though, because it's a different it, it, position. It's a, it's a different argument than like like doing your three wide receivers, like picking a receiver to play in the slot. Yeah, like, receivers again, like play more you know, around than cornerbacks right. do. I would say. Um, okay, so um, and again, I'm picking two defensive ends, two defensive tackles, like not focusing on the particulars here. Again, just for the purposes of like grading the best players in the division, I do have two lists that were tweeted at me, by the way, one from a Cowboys mm. fan, one from an Eagles fan, Brandon. Um, so we'll get to those um, as we move along as well. Um, my first defensive end, um, this isn't like a ranking, but my first one is Demarcus Lawrence. <laughs> I don't know how you can not have him on your list. Uh, he is on both lists from, uh, I'll just read the handles now. Uh, one is at Dak to CD. That's obviously the Cowboys fan. And Mike, and he is, his username is Spurs. Uh, and then Michael Stevens, who is at Mike underscore J underscore Stevens, who in his Twitter bio has the phrase go birds. Um, and Michael does have Demarcus Lawrence as one of his two defensive ends. So the Eagles need to have one defensive lineman here from on this all-star team, because you can't tell me like the Eagles don't have, I mean, the Eagles arguably have the best defensive it's line in the division. interesting. This is a conversation about DeMarcus right? Lawrence. Wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't sure. you argue the Eagles have the best defensive line in the division? So it would be really weird if they didn't have at least one I don't one know if I would. Like, again, okay. it, it depends how we're qualifying best, Micah Parsons. at the Parsons. very least? I mean, yeah, but that doesn't mean they have to have one. I mean, be again. It really weird uh, if they didn't have a representative. They're, they're going to have a defensive lineman, like, to answer okay. that question. So, okay. like, they will have a defensive lineman, on, like, present on, along the front. But DeMarcus Lawrence is, without question, one of the best defense. You can, you can make a He's the best defensive end in the division. I mean, we'll see what Chase Young evolves into in year three. But right now, I, I think the mantle firmly belongs to DeMarcus Lawrence. I will give it to him, but I will say that in the mm. last three years – 14 and a half sacks for DeMarcus Lawrence. Okay, but the he like he barely played last year. Like that's not fair. Like mm. and you have to include that. So, and despite barely playing, he was again fourth as far as PFF's overall defensive grades for edge rushers. The top not 5 terrible. in case you're curious. Miles My, Garrett, Max Crosby, Von Miller, DeMarcus Lawrence, Rashawn Gary, TJ Watt number 6, Nick Bosa 7 just for yeah, full context. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying okay, well, the production needs to be better. It does. It just does. Of course and, it does. I mean, but he's he's the best edge rusher 
in the division. So boom, that one's easy. Do you want to go to the other end first? Or do you want to do like, you want to go left to right or right to left or like just kind of like through the middle and go to the two tackles? Well, just for context with the sack production, 14 and a half the last three years. In that same stretch, Hassan Reddick had 23 and a half. And one of those years, he was playing off ball linebacker. So, you know, I'm just saying he has to get that sack total up. Again, to Demarcus Lawrence position. played seven games last year. Uh-huh. I mean, so. Okay, like, durability is just... an issue. He's getting older. No, it's not. I mean, before that, he played every single game for four straight okay. seasons. Okay, then I his mean, sack like, production was really low in all those games he played the prior seasons. Again, like, the, the sack thing is, like, A, super annoying. But, like, and this. I mean, it matters. You know, but when you bring when you bring what I'm about to bring up up, uh, like people be like, oh, well, he is maybe the best edge rusher in the NFL as far as defending the run. Like that matters too. Does it? You can make an argument as far as like sure. where like where it matters for you, but like that is such an important part of his overall game. So Demarcus Lawrence, best defensive end on our team, best defensive end on our All Stars. Boom, roasted. Do you want to go tackles or to the other end? Go to the other end. I went it's with Chase Young, Young because yeah, I think you have to give him the benefit of the doubt. What we saw as a rookie was pretty good. I know he wasn't as great last year before he got hurt, but I do think, you know, he's just going to be a freak still. I don't think there's any reason to believe otherwise. Um, yeah, I think those are the top two. I think Reddick, again, could make it next year. If, if, if Reddick has another year, like he just did the past two years, then he has to make this team next year because these last sure. two years are really good and the sack production is really high. And I'm not saying it's guaranteed to happen, but I'm saying like he's he's right on the cusp. I think he should be the third guy if we had three. I, I agree, but we don't. We have two, and I think it's Chase Young. Um, and for what it's worth, Dak DeCity agrees with you and I both that it's Chase Young. Michael Stevens, though, does have Hassan Reddick as his other yep. end. So, um, you know, there is a, a contingency of people, you know, who believe it's that, close. But... The gap is not is not and, it shouldn't be. It's not huge. I I don't like this. Isn't an exercise of like building for the future, like because it is like all stars, right? Like the, who's the best now? I still would take Chase Young, and I, I realize that the like margin might be thinner than we maybe thought it would have been a year ago. Um, some of that's just him coming back from injury, and that's a big question mark, and we'll see. But like I feel comfortable having him be number two. Um, that being said, uh, moving to defensive tackles, um, you want to just hear both of mine. You want to hear one? Like I think it's probably easier to do both and just okay. kind of flesh it out. Um, so I'm looking here. Uh, Dak DeCity agrees with me. Michael only half so we all have Jonathan Allen do you agree is that one of your defensive tackles I think you have to put him in there I think he's if we're talking about underrated players maybe we should have went with him honestly from a national level I think he's a little underrated Mm -hmm. okay so then we currently have one cowboy two commanders Um, I and Dak DeCity both have Fletcher Cox however Mm, uh, Michael Stevens has Javon Hargrave not Fletcher Cox Um, so you know um, I'm fine like, Cox, splitting the difference, but I mean, it's up to you. Fletcher Cox has four and a half sacks in his last 22 games. I know it's that's not, not all about that. Like, I mean, yeah, but like, it, dude, he's not the same player. He's just not. And, I recognize, like, I'm not putting him off of name alone, but I mean, like, like, if we go off PFF grade, I mean, he was 29th. I mean, which is like, it sounds Hargrave? so much. It's 32nd. Okay. But that's so, also because Hargrave is not as good as against the run. Um, but he is a really good, he's a, he's a much, if you go like, go like, if you sort by pass rush grade, he's probably like, very high in that because he's a very good disruptive pass rusher and that's what i'm valuing here more he is he is second by pass rush yeah, grade and, exactly and John, so jonathan like, allen is third just you know to be fair but as right far as, so I, i'd rather yeah. go with that honestly um especially if you're gonna we're gonna kind of talk about the run here we have demarcus lawrence so he'll he'll figure that out um i i was wondering if you were gonna put leonard williams on here instead because giants fans are gonna be mad that he didn't get a spot on this team i thought about it but again like you know I didn't, I didn't know like how we wanted to qualify this and like how we wanted to cheat um as like as a different example um you know right now blogging the boys on our youtube channel we're doing our training camp preview series and so we're looking at each position by position and kind of breaking it down and so when we were talking about for example ed, or defensive ends i didn't include micah parsons and some of our comments were like how could you not include well you know like hey and like for the purpose of that exercise you know my our stipulation was we're going off of the way they're listed on dallascowboys.com's website so that we stay uniform here and so when we were talking about linebackers we weren't talking about jaron curse who i think we'll get to in a little bit here um and so like most places classify Leonard as a defensive end. And again, like you can get creative here and like cheat a little if you want to. And I'm, I'm fine with that. But like, I, 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 st- I think even if you, if you put him here, I still think he loses out. I mean, he's probably the, the first man out. I would say he's a. Redick. Uh, you cut out for a second there. I, said I would say that Redick. Leonard Williams is even the first odd man out, not Hassan Reddick, honestly. Mm, um, well, I don't know. I'm not thinking about it in that way, but. Uh, I, I do want to point out that uh, Hargrave 
was a pro bowler last year and he really should have been in from the jump like he mm, made it as an alternate because kenny clark opted out but it, it's just look at this look at these numbers here okay so javon hargrave kenny clark javon hargrave played about like 50 fewer snaps than clark and had 15 more tackles two more tackles for loss three and a half more sacks eight more quarterback hits one more forced fumble and one more pass deflected and somehow <laughs> kenny clark made the pro bowl over him i guess because He's on a better team or whatever, but that's dumb. Anyway, uh, so yeah, like, you know, Hargrave was the pro bowler last year, not Cox, and it should be him. Um, I was just curious uh, because Hargrave's grade against the run is so bad. I mean, like, I'm talking ridiculously bad. It is like Houston Texans' new helmet, red, red. Um, I want you to guess he's the what worst. So like number one, he would like the worst would be number I one. I remember worst, looking second. at that. Yeah, I don't know, like fifth worst or something. He is the second or sixth worst, not second. Okay, um, so yeah, very very close. close. Um, just he's, um, he's a smaller guy. Like that's the thing. That's what works against him. Um, he's just not. He's not like a big like Fletcher Cox is a big hulking defensive tackle. Javon Hargrave right. is shorter, but he has such good leverage with that natural leverage. Some would say, yeah, given his lower stature. Um, but he's a really good pass rusher, and I'm just going to value that more. I'm not going to worry about the run defense. That's fine. Okay, so then um, through our defensive line, we have Demarcus Lawrence, Jonathan Allen, Javon Hargrave, Chase Young, one Cowboy, two Commanders, one Eagle. Let's move to our two linebackers. We don't have to waste much time here. The best <laughs> player of the group, Micah Parsons. Like that's not a joke. Like he's like if we had to have a captain, like he's the best, is he not? Yeah, sure. You said it. That's all I. I would. I know that you didn't want to, but you said it. And well, everybody. Yeah, I mean, who else would it be? Who else? I mean, you're probably not actually giving it to him, just from a standpoint of like a more veteran player. Typically. Oh no, 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 no! Don't do this. No, he's he's captain. He's, you already he said would. it. You already agreed. Everybody heard you. It's cool. So, uh, Michael yeah. Parsons. Um, the second linebacker choice was interesting uh, for me. And by the way, uh, both of, of our uh, Twitter contributions have Michael Parsons as well. Um, Michael Stevens has Blake Martinez. Um, Stack the city has Cole Holcomb as his other linebacker. Mm. I was on the fence. I really was. And it wasn't until the conversation that I had with Michael Peterson on Monday football Monday, which everybody can go listen to on the SB nation NFL show. He was filling in for Pete Sweeney yesterday or yesterday for us um, this week on Monday football Monday, um, former charger. Cause you're white. Mm. That's my choice here. Mm. Uh, you mean Kaiser white? Uh, I I don't think he, I don't know. This is really not an uh, enthralling conversation of like Blake Martinez versus Cole Holcomb versus Kaiser White. Clearly. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is not a, a, like have like, you know, we were over here like, Oh, Javon Hargrave, Leonard Williams, like, you know, you know, like that was a lot of fun. This is, this is, there's not a lot of competition to be very clear here. I I am reluctant to say the giants deserve some reputation or some recognition because they really don't they don't deserve rep, representation for how bad they've been but i think martinez has kind of been more consistent for a long time and isn't necessarily super flashy but has been really solid so i don't know i think those are kind of different players like i think martinez probably you know more of a typical middle linebacker um whereas kaiser white is more of like a weak side linebacker i would say and kind of more coverage guy and can do some things as a blitzer um and we already have parsons for some pass rush so it kind of you're kind of, I think, like looking at fit here too. If you're really trying to maximize the team, so you can kind of go in a bunch of different ways. I'm going to go with Martinez. Um, White has is the second highest graded linebacker from a pass rush standpoint, according to right. people. obviously Mike is number one, uh, but mm-hmm. and White is 14th overall, but he's the second highest player in the NFC East. Um, I mean, again, there's an argument to be made, and this is maybe like your personal cup of tea. And I'm fine throwing a bone at uh, Blake Martinez. I think he was our other linebacker last year. I think yeah. we did even put Micah on the list last year, just like but partly because the division is else? kind of low. Yeah. Um, so I'm fine going Blake Martinez. I, and let the record show that I made an argument for an eagle that BLG shot down. For all of you BGN Radio loyalists, that w- that's the way this went down, just so you I- know. I just think there's some question marks with Kaiser White, uh, our good contributor. Johnny Page did a breakdown for him and, and kind of was reluctant to see him as like a full-time player as much as more of a rotational guy. And it's very possible he'll be that here because the Eagles drafted N'Kobe Dean and they still like TJ Edwards. So you have a top three linebackers of those guys. And I feel like there's going to be some rotation. And also, RJ, I everyone, the Eagles themselves, most importantly, most relevant here, have been burned by free agent linebacker signings. They've signed a bunch of free agent linebackers in like past off seasons, and they've never even basically like finished a season with the team. So I'm not going to just assume that Kaiser White's going to come in here and be great. 
like just based on history, I think that's a little much. I hope he does well. Obviously, I think there's a chance he could. And they invested more in him. I think like five million total, up to five million. So there's a chance that that bigger investment can lead to a legit player instead of like someone like Zach Brown or Corey Nelson sure. who ended up cutting. But uh, I'm just I'm reluctant. I think Blake Martinez has proven it, and I just think there's more of a, a, a floor there than there is with White. Um, fine. So, okay. Our defense so far, front seven, so to speak. Um, not really right now, literally, but, uh, Demarcus Lawrence, Jonathan Allen, Javon Hargrave, Chase Young, Micah Parsons, Blake Martinez. We have two Cowboys, two commanders, an Eagle and a giant as we move back to our secondary. Um, so there are two corners that myself and our two Twitter con- uh, contributors had BLG. The first one is Trayvon Diggs. I know that there's a huge argument. There's like, he gets burned too much. He really, I, I do think he's this fascinating player. Like who he evolves into, I think is going to like, tell us a lot about the future of evaluating the position. Um, and, and so that's just interesting in and of itself. Um, I, and I, the argument I've made all along at BTB and here and everywhere is like, it's stupid to expect as many interceptions in 2022. He will very likely regress to the mean. There will very likely be a huge regression. I know that you've talked about that with Jimmy Kemsky, um, and we'll get Jimmy on eventually here. But um, he can still grow and develop and, and get better as a corner in year three without the high volume of interceptions. Although a lot of people, I imagine that you and I will have a conversation, in, you know, I don't know, 10 months from now, you'd be like, well, you had, you know, only had three interceptions, blah, blah, blah. And so, but he could still get better. But I think he's by far. Maybe not by far, but he is the best corner in the division right now. I don't know how you don't give him the title as of this moment. Sure. I mean, it's hard to argue with the interceptions, even if he is getting burned. I mean, you, you kind of take that, right? Like, you kind of take a cornerback who gives up big plays as long as he's making really big plays, too, because there's a lot of value in those turnovers, obviously. Um, so, yeah, he's he's there. And Darius Light, I think, is the other starting quarterback on this defense coming off a of Pro Bowl season, obviously has a reputation. Uh, was not voted in the top 10 uh, among NFL executives, coaches, scouts, whatever, polled by ESPN. But I think Slay should be the other starter for this team. I agree. I do think it's funny that, um, at least from a Cowboys perception, the reason that you know Philly partly part of the reason Philly traded for Darius Slay was to cover Amari Cooper and then Dallas traded him away like I think that's just a little <laughs> funny um but yeah I think it's Darius Slay I think you know year one was obviously not great um uh, but bounced back and so interesting also to see who he's going to be who he's going to develop into I know there's like now how does he handle the the hype you know there was uh, there was some hype I think in year one but it, it fizzled out rather quickly and you know that was obviously a, a really toxic year for the Eagles as a whole um so I think we're in heavy agreement here now the third corner spot is the only one where I put two options because I really, truly am undecided. Incidentally, our two Twitter users have each of the two options. Um, so my two options for the third spot are Kendall Fuller and James Bradbury. Uh, Dak DeCiti thinks it's Kendall Fuller and Michael Stevens thinks it's James Bradbury. So we have two votes for each. I think you have to treat the nickel position like the nickel position and not because we're making a team and we're not just saying, OK, three cornerbacks and – I was looking into if Bradbury kind of had nickel versatility and his experience there. And I think there was some talk about it in the past, but there's really no extensive track record of him mm-hmm. playing in there. So it's tough for me to do that. And Kendall Fuller has not only played like in the slot and not outside, he's also played at safety too, or at least a little bit there for the Chiefs. So I think his versatility is a nice bonus. And he's actually a good player. It's not just like he can also line up at positions, but he's fine. I mean, like, he allowed an 84.1 passer rating in 2020. He was at 95.9. It's a little worse, but still not bad uh, last year. He's like, he's a good player. I think it makes all the sense in the world to put him in the slot. And in theory of our theoretical team, that if there's an injury, he can kind of fill in at almost any secondary spot. I think there's a lot of value in that. I like the methodology. Like I said, I mean, I was I was torn because I didn't know exactly, you know, if we, if we wanted to cheat here, um, maybe, maybe Bradbury would be the pick. But you're right. Um, the safety flexibility is a big thing. Um, like the, especially because I mean, the safeties I, aren't good. <laughs> or yeah. Um, so I, I will take, or I will agree that it will be Kendall Fuller. Um, so we're in agreement. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Are we ready? So then, our group so far, as we head to the uh, the safeties, we've got again just to run it back: Demarcus Lawrence, Jonathan Allen, Javon Hargrave, Chase Young, Micah Parsons, Blake Martinez, Trayvon Diggs, Darius Slay, and Kendall Fuller. So that is three Cowboys, three, and a partridge and a pear tree. Ah, nice. Three Commanders and three Eagles. Is that correct? Um, I don't know. I can't do math. We've got uh, you Hargrave. Talk about the safeties and I'll count it. Two two Eagles. Two Eagles. Um, so three, three, and two. Um, no, that math is wrong. Three, three, two, and one. Sorry. 
we, yeah, we only have one giant, right? Okay. Well, we have another giant because Xavier McKinney is is one of the two safeties, yeah. and the, and both of our users agree with that as well. So I assume he's on your list also. It's a really thin position in this division. Back when the Eagles signed Jaquiski Tart a couple of weeks ago, nice. uh, our good friend KP from Niners Nation, Kyle Posey, tweeted out like the, the the Eagles now have the best safety in the NFC East, and obviously I think there was. A little bit tongue in cheek there, but I also think he kind of meant it. Um, and I and I don't know, I haven't, I don't know Tart enough to really feel confident in like co-signing that or anything. But the point is, like the it's just not a good division for safeties. And I think McKinney is like like a nice player, but I don't think he's anything special necessarily. And then the other guy, uh, J. Ron Curse, you talked about, might be Cowboys' most overrated player in the sense that he kind of had this middling career and then had a really good season last year but you don't necessarily know what to expect from him moving forward and even though he like graded out well and had a good year last year is like is he really a star again he might just be like a solid starter i think there's a difference though between saying like he makes the all-star team and i feel comfortable betting on him long term right like so that's where i'm at with jaron Chris. like i do think i think he's the other safety to be very sure clear. but again there's um, no one who else would who else would it be who else are you gonna put on this list no i mean oh. they're they're well uh to be so um Dak to CD's nominees are mine, Xavier McKinney and J. Ron Curse. Uh, Michael's are Xavier McKinney and Cameron Curl. So get, that would be the other option. Um, but there, there isn't like a strong one, to be very clear here. I think it's J. Ron Curse. And again, like th- now you're you're like toying with things because the Cowboys play him up front kind of at linebacker a lot. That's how Dan Quinn uses him. So like that was like back to our training computer previous years. Like when we talked about linebackers, people were like, well, you didn't talk about J. Ron Curse. Like, yeah, well, he's technically a safety. Like, you know, this, there's a lot of creativity here. But um, if we're classifying him as a safety here, uh, especially because there is no real other talent at the position across the division. I think it has to be him and Xavier McKinney. And I think I, I really do feel like we've picked the best players available. Like I know there was a little bit of debate, you know, at left tackle and tight end last week. Uh, but I, I don't think that there is much room for debate with, I got uh, like, so we're locking that in. Right. And if that's the case, like where did we, maybe Leonard Williams is the one we left off that maybe deserves a place, but I don't know who you're, you're booting out to, to bring him in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, people would probably say Hargrave. I think Allen is a little bit more solidified. But again, it's, it's it'd be silly to me if the Eagles didn't have one representative on the defensive line when that's it's one of the biggest strengths of their team. Um, so I'm doing the math here, and he was a pro um, board. So we have um, doing the math. We have four Cowboys, um, and they are Demarcus Lawrence, Micah Parsons, Trayvon Diggs, and Jaron Curse. We have three commanders in Jonathan Allen, Chase Young, and um, Kendall Fuller. We have mm-hmm. two Eagles in Javon Hargrave and Darius Slay, and we have two Giants in Blake Martinez and Xavier McKinney. Mm-hmm. Nice and balanced. Uh, and now, if you want to go to our full scale, too, because I'm doing the math, adding up from our offense last week, we have nine Cowboys at the lead, seven Eagles, four Commanders, and two Giants on the entire NFC East offense, defense combined. And we will still do special teams, but, I mean, obviously, this kind of carries more weight. Yeah, so, um, so again, total, correct me if I'm wrong, nine Cowboys, five on offense, four on defense, four yep. Commanders, one on offense, three on defense, seven Eagles, five on offense, two on defense, mm-hmm. and then two Giants, none on Both offense, defense. two on defense. Right. That feels yeah. pretty representative of, who, of where they are. Yeah, and, you know, I think the Cowboys get some extra benefit of the doubt here from, you know, being division winners. Um, well, I think that that helps break a tie when you're at, like, a J-Ron sure. course or something like that. Um, or, yeah. But that he's the, the most, like, on the the one the one I'm most on the fence about, if I'm being honest, but uh, as far as Cowboys are concerned, but um, yeah, congratulations to Demarcus Lawrence. You were robbed of being an NFC East All Star a year ago. Brandon has seen the light. He has atoned, and he is sorry for uh, excluding you. And he has placed you where you belong here in 2022. I mean, for your sake, it'd be nice to see some sacks out of him. But yeah. Um, okay. Anything else we want to get to before we, we say goodbye? Thank you, by the way, to Dak to CD and Mike underscore J underscore Stevens uh, for your contributions. They, they were helpful. It's always fun to do this activity. Um, I was looking at, back through some of the show ideas that we did last year. As you know, I'm wont to do. And we were also doing like the most painful losses and stuff. So we did some fun stuff last year. Um, I don't know what we have coming up for next week's show necessarily. 
I, we, although I do want to, I do want to throw in the special teams thing because you, you can't do the whole team without that. Although that's, we'll that's we'll throw them in, of course. That's we'll throw them in. Show, but it'll, we'll, we'll touch on it. Look, let me be very clear. Brandon and I can come up with ideas, all right. But if you want us to talk about something, let us know, and we'll do it. You know what I mean? We're men of the people. We'll handle whatever you throw our way, as long as you get it to us with some time in advance. You know, sometime in the next few days, we'll do a show about it. He again is on Twitter, Instagram at Brandon Godden. I am on Twitter and Instagram at RJ Ochoa. I think that could be fun. I think that, you know, would be interesting. Yeah. Hey, let's, you know, the painful losses thing was difficult. Um, yeah. Not, not a fan of, of revisiting that. People in the comments too. Yeah. We're, we're saying the same thing. I remember at the time they're like, Oh, but it, I think it's also kind of low key healing to kind of go through it with other people to see other people experiencing it. It's like, okay, so it's not just me feeling who felt really terrible about this. It was a bunch of people. So that kind of feels a little bit better. Misery loves company. Um, awesome. Then uh, are we ready to leave? Do you have anything else you want to get off your chest about? Anything in the world? Anything at all? So next week is really our last show in like full on dead zone. Uh, the 26th, when we record on Tuesday, July 26th, Eagles will be reporting for training camp that day. I don't know when the Cowboys, Cowboys are too. Okay, that so there day. you go. Okay. Won't actually be practicing that day, to be clear, but we'll be right. reporting for camp. And I don't think they're going to have availability. Um, but still, things will be more in swing at that point. So there'll, there'll probably be some roster news and different things happening. So point is the mixtape is going to be ramping up here very soon yeah and um we'll do our best throughout camp in the preseason at least um to get stabby on and Ed valentine and just kind of get get the the lowdown on um checkups right um and whatnot and uh, see who else we can get on you know oh we also need to have jimmy on at some point and discuss the um yes. the dumpster fire series obviously uh that's this may be this year's version of most painful losses but um okay go. brandon I am going to, as we leave, ask you to um, – I'm going to ask you to tell us your favorite movie to watch when it's raining. Favorite movie to watch when it's raining is The Shawshank Redemption. Mm, Brooks was here. Peace.